I'm going to show you how to do the required practical on refraction for GCSE physics. What you're going to need for this practical is a ray box, that's just a little light source, a slit to make a nice straight ray that comes out of it, a rectangular glass or perspex block. You don't need a semicircular block, but it comes in handy when talking about total internal reflection. You need a sharp pencil, you need a ruler, and you need a protractor as well. Now, in order to get the best results for this experiment, it's best done in a dark room. So I'm gonna turn off the lights so you can see more clearly what I'm doing. Okay, so here I have my piece of paper, and that's going to allow me to draw the rays of light that are going through my block. So I'm gonna put my perspex block, first of all, on the piece of paper, and I'm gonna draw around it using my sharp pencil. And we're gonna make sure that the block stays in that position every single time. Now, what you wanna do is then remove it and pick a point, let's say right here, where we're going to actually shine our ray of light. However, we want to measure the angle at which the light goes into the block. We call that the angle of incidence. But it is not the angle here. It's not the angle between the ray and the surface of the block. It's between the ray and the line that we call the normal. Now, anything that's a normal means 90 degrees too. So all we have to do is get our protractor, shall we get it lined up, 90 degrees like that, and I'm going to draw my normal on there with a dotted line. It's gonna go outside and inside the block. Okay, so I'm now ready to start measuring my first angle of incidence of the ray going into the block. So I'm going to pop my block back on there. And okay, what can we see happening here? We can see that the light is going in. Can you see that we have a partial reflection? We always get that when light goes into another medium. We always get a little bit of reflection going on. And what you'll find is that this angle, the angle of incidence here and the angle of reflection, they are going to be the same. They're always going to be the same. Light always reflects off at an angle that is equal to the angle of incidence. Now you can measure the angle of reflection each time you change the angle of incidence as well, but you know it's going to be the same. It's up to you whether you want to check that that's true or not. Okay, so what we're going to do, we're just going to put a little cross on the beam and we know that it's hitting the block at the normal there. And then we're going to put a little cross where it exits the glass block. Now we're not too concerned about what's going on with this ray here. Can you see that actually the angle of this ray and the ray that comes all the way out of the block is going to be the same. When light goes into a new medium, it refracts, it changes direction because it's changing speed. As the light ray goes into the block, it gets slower, so it bends changes direction towards the normal. It gets closer to the normal. But then as it refracts out, the opposite happens. We have equal refraction going on here and here, so these two rays are parallel. But we're not concerned about that too much. So there we go, I can take my block off right now, and then I'm going to do just a nice dot to dot. So there is where my ray went in and traveled through the block as well. This is the angle of incidence, so I'm gonna call it I, and this is the angle here of refraction, so I'm gonna call that R. Now what we need to do is measure those angles. This is what some people find confusing, getting the protractor the right way around. All you have to do is make sure that the protractor is this way around with zero on the normal. You don't use a protractor like this. You have it turned through 90 degrees like this. So make sure that we're all lined up like that on our normal. And I can see my first angle of incidence. Well, it says 135 degrees, but of course that's too big. So we're looking for 180 minus 135. That is 45 degrees. I was a bit lucky to get that back on, that was by accident. So the first angle of incidence is 45 degrees. Now we wanna see what angle of refraction that is. So nicely lined up again with the normal. My angle of refraction is, well, it's not 150, it's 30 degrees. So there we go, I have an angle of incidence and I have an angle of 
refraction. Now, the more that light bends, as it were, as it enters a new medium, the higher the refractive index we say that it has. And we can actually do a calculation to find out the refractive index of a material. What we do is take the sine of the angle of incidence, that's 45, so sine 45 over sine 30, so sine of i over sine of r, and that gives us 1.4. So that means that the refractive index of this perspex is 1.4. Now refractive index tells you something else as well. It also tells you how much slower light goes in the medium compared to in a vacuum or in air just normally. So if the refractive index is 1.4, that means that light travels 1.4 times slower in the perspex compared to in air. Now, if you want to be super scientific about it, what we can do is find more angles of incidence and refraction. So I'm going to put uh, another cross there where it's going in and another cross there where it's coming out. Join up the dots again. And I can see that we have 27 degrees and my angle of refraction is this time 21 degrees. Now what you wanna do is find five angles of incidence and their corresponding angles of refraction. What you can then do is plot a graph of sine i against sine r, and that should give you a nice straight line graph. And the gradient of this will give you a much more reliable value for the refractive index. If you've got another material as well, other than perspex, maybe it's a proper glass block, you can do the experiment again and you can compare the refractive index for each. Now there's one more thing that we can talk about and that is total internal reflection. What is total internal reflection? Well, let's take my semicircular block here. And if I shine my light ray in there, can you see that it is, we do have the partial reflection, but it is refracting out in this direction. The good thing about semicircular blocks is that as the light ray comes out, it doesn't change direction. So long as it's hitting the flat side right in the center. So the only changing of direction that's happening here is as the light ray goes in. Let's increase the angle of incidence. So that means getting closer to the boundary, that is the surface. What's happened to the angle of refraction? It's getting bigger, it's getting bigger, it's getting bigger. Can you see this moving outwards? Let's keep going. But can you see that eventually I'm going to end up with my light ray going in basically parallel to the surface. What's my angle of incidence now? Well, it's effectively 90 degrees. Can you see it's still refracting out there? So we have a lot of reflection, but we still have some refraction. However, watch what happens when I spin my semicircular block round. Now, my light ray is going in through the semicircle side and coming out of the flat side. Again, it's refracting as it comes out. It's not refracting as it goes in. Well, it's not changing direction anyway. You see, we still have that partial reflection. So we're now looking at what's going on at this point here as the light exits the glass block. Watch what happens when I increase the angle of incidence of the light ray that's inside the glass block. Can you see that? As I increase the angle of incidence, the angle of refraction is getting bigger until, can you see that the refracted ray has all but disappeared? And if I do it ever so slightly more, now there is technically a light ray that is being refracted along the boundary. You just can't see it. No light is being refracted out. There's not a mirror here. Again, it's just glass. But the angle of incidence is now so big that we only have light being reflected on the surface, not being refracted. We have now achieved total internal reflection, or TIR for short. Now this happens at a very specific angle for each material. So let's find out what the angle of incidence is for the light hitting the flat side of the block. So I'm gonna draw around my block. I'm going to draw two little crosses where the light's going in. Then I can join them up. And you remember me saying that technically we did have that light ray going along the boundary as well. We just couldn't see it. So let's find out what the angle of incidence was here. 
again I'm going to need to draw my normal so let's put our protractor like that and draw our normal we need this angle here this is the angle of incidence and using my protractor I can see that that is 43 degrees when the angle of incidence is 43 degrees, that's when we achieve total internal reflection for the first time. Of course, if I increase my angle of incidence past that, then we're just going to get more reflection. But we're concerned with this angle at which it happens for the first time, right there. This angle of incidence is now called the critical angle. The critical angle is the angle of incidence above which total internal reflection happens. So in order for TIR to happen, you need the angle of incidence to be bigger than the critical angle, but you also need something else to be true. You need another condition. Do you remember that when I had my semicircular block round that way, we didn't actually get TIR. Light was still being refracted out. That's because we were looking at the light ray coming from air going into the glass. When we turn it round, we're looking at the light ray that's in the glass coming out into the air. That was the only time that we had TIR happen. So we need the angle of incidence to be greater than the critical angle, but we also need the light ray to be in the material, also known as the medium, that has the higher refractive index. Or we could say the more optically dense medium. 